Keith Hilson at the Trombone Shop at Schmidt Music back with another instrument review for you. So today I've got a vintage Kahn small bore tenor, in particular the Kahn 48H Constellation. So the Constellation line from Kahn was a line that they developed in the late 50s and had available through the early 1980s. Um, at this time this was billed as their top of the line instruments both on trombones, trumpets. Um, so the uh, 48H, very interesting. So we know that for a lot of players, the, the con, the 4H, the 6H have been go-to small bar terms for a long time. The Constellation, the 48H, is a very, very different design in a lot of ways. Now, it's still a 500 bore, but a very different bell design. So this has what they call an Electro D bell. Um, there's a little bit of, of a debate about exactly what that means, but in general, it's accepted that the Electro D bell was yellow brass, heavily copper plated, and then nickel plated and lacquered. So it's a very hefty bell. You know, you can hear it. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to get it to ring, but it, when you get it ringing, it really resonates, which I think gives it a very different sound profile than from other some of the other con trombones that we're used to hearing here. You know, a few other features, you can tell kind of the era that it was built. So we've got, you know, a little bit chunkier, you know, braces, um, you know, and ferrules here, very reminiscent, for example, of what we saw from Olds and from Reynolds from this time period as well. Uh, reverse uh, yellow brass tuning slide here. So I'm gonna take a play on the 48H Constellation here so you can hear this horn in action. <laughs> strikes me with this particular model is how in front of the instrument I feel like the sound is. We talk sometimes about feedback. For me, that just means, you know, how much sound we feel like we're getting back to us. Where does the sound start? Depending on the instrument, some instruments feel like the sound starts at the bell, occasionally behind the bell. With this instrument here, and I think a lot of this has to do with the really heavy bell setup, it feels like the sound starts out well beyond the bell and just keeps going. Now, the result of that, I think, is a couple different things. First off, it's not the most responsive instrument ever. And again, I think there's a few different reasons for that. Typically, I find the heavier the instrument, the more work it takes to get it moving. Now, there are some benefits to this. I think it's a really stable instrument. Um, one of the things I noticed playing through 
you know, for example, getting into the upper dynamics is it felt like everything really locked in place. The timbre didn't shift as much, you know, so as I was going through Autumn in New York, you know, towards the end in the upper range, everything felt like it, it, it had the same color as it had in the lower register, which I thought was really, really nice. Um, I wanted to, you know, make sure I included a little bit of bebop there. And there, like I said, it's, I don't find it quite as responsive. I felt like I had to work a little bit harder to get some articulation, or articulation to get the diction, to really get the you know, the, the quick movement between the partials I was looking for. But when we threw in some of the Al Gray at the end there, boy, I really liked, again, how stable it was at those upper dynamics. It didn't get overly bright. No, I thought the color in, in a way reminded me a little bit of like the, like a King Silver Sonic with a, you know, a Sterling Silver Bell. There's some of the same color and weight to the sound, but I thought this was a little bit different. So, yeah, again, I can see this in this particular model working well in a lot of different situations. If you're looking for a, a lighter weight horn, something that's super quick responding, this probably isn't going to be it. But if you're looking for something, either a section horn or, or a lead horn that you can lean into and give you a lot of, again, again core and stability with the instrument, boy, this could really be a, a nice option here. So it's always a pleasure to have these great vintage instruments coming through the shop, getting a chance to play them, experience them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video, learned a little bit about this very unique instrument as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, think about giving it a thumbs up. Feel free as always to leave your comments below. We always appreciate the interaction there. If you haven't done so already, we appreciate you thinking about subscribing to our channel and you can always find us on all of the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Thank you very much, everybody.